Hi, I'm Malcolm Roberts and I'm in the lovely town of Ayr in North Queensland, set amongst the lush green cane fields. This region should be dynamic and really hopping, and yet shops are shutting. Why? Because of government, Lib Lab government. And I want you to meet a lovely bloke called Robert Rossiter, who just makes good common sense. This fella knows what it's about. We're here to discuss environmental protection, Great Barrier Reef protection measures and other legislation, Amendment Bill 2019. And what Robert points out to me is that there are targets now. By 2025, 2025, the state government wants a 60% reduction in anthropogenic end of catchment dissolved inorganic nitrogen loads. That means fertilizers. Mate, do you waste fertilizers? No. Can you afford to? No. Right. So by 2025, the state government wants a 25% reduction in anthropogenic end of catchment sediment loads. That's soil runoff, right? Mm -hmm. Do you waste, you'd like to see your soil run runoff? Most definitely not. Okay. Um, and get this, it's based on a 2017 scientific consensus statement. A consensus statement, not science. Have you ever been given any evidence, scientific evidence, that this needs to be done? This is where, well, this is what upsets me in relation to um, when we have um, people come out in the media and say to us that we are out there, uh, um, what's the... Um, Killing the reef. Yeah, and polluting the reef or, or whatever. I don't ever see any actual data that's been um, given in the tarred evidence. Uh, it's had no quality assurance mm -hmm. done on it. Um, in other words, how was the science applied to end up with that result? But, but you keep being told they've got the data, but you've never seen any. You've had a, a prominent scientist, a very well regarded scientist, came down here last year and yes. told you the reef's in good shape. We hear from tour operators, we hear from scientists, marine biologists, the reef's in great shape. Mm -hmm. It has its fluctuations, bleaching now and then, that's all natural. Yes. But the reef is in good shape. Well, he, he virtually said to us, look, if I thought that any of you were doing one thing wrong, he would come down as like a ton of bricks. Yeah. But he said, you're not doing anything wrong at the moment. Uh, so, And then we've got targets now being set by the state government based on nothing. This sounds like the Murray-Darling Basin, sounds like climate change claims, and it's based on so-called science, but there is no hard data showing that we need to do something. This is going to cost the sugar industry in this state $120 million a year, but the government's going to give you help by transitioning by allowing them to have three and a half million dollars yes. of support. Yes. So that's three percent of the cost. Then you've on, on top of that you've got fines rising from six thousand dollars going to a maximum of two hundred and seventeen. Actually it's not a maximum, it can go higher than that, can't yep. it? Yes, correct. So this is going to kill agriculture. You've also got kids being told, farm kids being told, kids in general being told that farming is bad for the reef, it's killing the reef. Humans are bad for the reef, killing the reef. Mm. Humans are bad for the planet. So you told me a little while ago, Robert, that economics runs a farm business. What do you mean? Well, given the way world prices have been for, for a number of years. Uh, sugar get, prices. Sugar prices, yes. Um, given all of the input costs and, and whatever you need to grow um, a, a hectare of cane, you've got to watch everything that you put in. To survive at the end, um, economics rules. You've got to make sure that every bit of fertiliser that you put on is only fertiliser that's necessary. Every bit of chemical that's put on is only put on which is necessary. Water right down the line. Um, you know, there's, there's growers out there aiming to do the best they possibly can but economics um, virtually tells you you can't use anything more than what you you can barely use just just to grow the crop. So you're not going to see it flush down the creek? No. I haven't got the money <laughs> to do that. It's crazy. Can you imagine? down the creek. And, and we heard from Dan McDonald last year that uh, every one of his uh, inputs, from farm inputs as a beef producer, mm -hmm. is now controlled by a bureaucrat or by regulations or by legislation. So that's basically socialising farming. Yes. So yes. Socialisation of farming. Yes. And what it means is that the bureaucrats, they don't ever share in the, in the 
losses every year, do they? No. So no. they want to control you and tell you what to do, but they won't share the responsibility. But people seem to think that if, if government hasn't got control, they think we're going to go off and do something silly. I'll come back to the same thing again. Economics runs my business. If I want to be profitable, um, continue the business in, into the future, I have got to look at making sure that I come out um, uh, making some money at the end. If I'm going and throwing fertiliser away, or chemicals away, or using too much water, or allowing sub, um, uh, topsoil to wash away, that's not going to make me profitable. Right, and I've said this many times, the best person for looking after the land is the owner of the land, because he or she will pay the price. If you rape the land, you'll have a lower value at the end of your farm life and when you, when you move or give it to your kids or when you sell up. Why would I go and destroy my land and then hand a problem over to my kids? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. If I'm, if I, if I'm not going to hand it over, I'm going to sell it. Why would I um, degrade my land um, and then at the end of the day when I go and sell it, I get less for it than right. what it really should be worth. I, w why do that? And that's what Pauline and I have been saying for years now. The other thing is, people might not know it in Brisbane, but you're actually load shedding on air conditioners at the moment up here. They have to turn their air conditioners off. It gets turned off, doesn't it? Yes, yes. So I think around the area it's different times, but um, at, um, I think it's seven in the morning until half past seven, um, or it might be another time, but and then at night time, uh, it's from half past seven till eight o'clock. Um, the air conditioning tariff is switched off. And yet we have some of the best, cleanest coal in the world, just in this electorate, Dawson electorate. Mm -hmm. And they're wanting to start Adani and the, and the Labor government is stopping that. You've also already told me about some farmers are not pumping water, which yeah, reduces cost. their, because of, because of electricity costs. Yeah, it's getting to the point now where you look at the bottom line with increasing prices on electricity and probably um, a lot of growers that I talk to say, you know, uh, we should be watering now. Um, but yeah, the cost of power is just uh, driving us out the door. Yeah, and, and then what we've got now is this is going to kill agricultural growth. We've already got many shops shut, shuttered in uh, Home Hill, which is just down the road from here. Mm -hmm. uh, some similar kind of stories in Townsville. Yes. So we've got the regions doing it pretty damn tough. Mm -hmm. And yet this is not a drought declare area, not a drought area at all. So it's not the weather that's causing the problem, it's the government that's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. So when the mill suffers, or when the grower suffers, mm -hmm. the mill suffer. When the mill suffer, the whole community suffers. Correct. Correct. It and would be just really nice to, to see us all being able to um, all work together in a, in a way um, to build an industry, to build a good community, um, all to be um, profitable. We're all doing the right thing under a, under a, um, a code or, or whatever uh, and move forward. And uh, we can see that there's been no evidence, no scientific evidence of any need for you to introduce these changes. There's been no need, there's been no evidence of any impact that you guys are having. And there's been no assessment, no scientific evidence of the impact of the legislation. They're just gonna impose it. That's right. So there's no data, no science underpinning this, just wild claims and opinions and wild targets. And they're doing it basically to chase Green's preferences. Yes, well, that's how I see it. I, if I'm giving a, given a problem or I've, I've been told I've been given a problem, um, if somebody tells me, shows me what it is, explains how we're going to solve the problem, I go, you move ahead and you do it. Yes. But when you're not showing the problem, you're just told there's a problem and there's no data to, to show that or no evidence to show that, it's, it's, it's never ending, you know. Who knows whether that's correct or not. There's no buy-in. No, None there's at no buy-in. So the only jobs they're wanting to protect are government jobs and their own jobs as politicians. But actually, in a warning to Labor, I'll just say to you that chasing the Greens' preferences is gonna cause you to end up out of office. And One Nation will stand up for the regions because this is where, Queensland is the only state in Australia where there are more people outside the capital city than in the capital city. 
The regions are vital, but the regions are getting hammered and we've got to put a stop to that. We've got to wake up to ourselves and we've got to make sure we base decisions on hard scientific data. That's all you want, isn't it? Yes, I just wish that politicians as a, as a whole would go and look at every decision on policy or whatever and instead of listening to bureaucratic uh, input, go out into the regions, sit down with the people, make a decision for the best possible outcome, not only for the region, but for Australia. Thank you.